they might be very much alike, these two, or they might have absolutely nothing in common. We're going to compare the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom with the Samsung Galaxy S4. I'm Anton Dinod, this is Pocket Now, let's go check it out. If you're not paying attention to the details, you might think that the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom is a Samsung Galaxy S4 with a zoom lens. This is not true. The Zoom and the GS4 have a lot in common, like materials, overall design, software, etc. But not that many as Samsung wants you to think. To be quite honest, the Zoom has more in common with the Galaxy Camera and the S4 Mini. Actually, it's an S4 Mini with a zoom lens, but that wouldn't have sounded that good in the marketing department. Before we dive in, let's get a couple of things out of the way. First, this is the Octa-Core Exynos 5 version GTI 9500. Second, for an in-depth look at the Samsung Galaxy S4, all of its features, make sure to check out our full review on Pocket Now. You should also subscribe to our social media to stay up to date with everything. As always, this video will focus on hardware, software and user experience, as well as the camera performance of the two. The usual hyperglazed polycarbonate, a familiar design, as well as the overused branding and naming is what these two have in common. The Galaxy S4, like we said in previous videos, or every time we had a chance to, is a rehash of the GS3 and Note 2 in terms of design and materials. One might say that Samsung is consistent, others may simply hate it. We'll say that the internals and the functionalities are making up for all of that. It is, after all, one of the best Android phones money can buy today. The Galaxy S4 Zoom, on the other hand, looks like something that could have resulted after the Galaxy Camera and the S4 Mini had a baby. Dude, are you talking on your camera? That's what I usually get when people see me use it as my daily driver. No, it's a phone with zoom lens, is usually my reply, which gets waved off quickly. Looking at the zoom from the front will make you instantly recognize a GS3 or an S4 Mini. It's a phone. Once you turn it to the side or to the back, you'll quickly realize that, honestly speaking, it looks like a camera. And there's nothing wrong with that, at least not in my book. Build quality and materials are as good as any Samsung phone, or as bad depending on your stance. Once you look at the internals, you'll see the huge difference between these two and come to realize that there's nothing S4 about the Zoom except its name. We've got either an Octa-Core, which is a dual quad-core Exynos 5 CPU running at 1.6GHz for the A15 chip and 1.2GHz for the A7 chip, a Snapdragon 600 at 1.9 GHz or a Snapdragon 800 at 2.3 GHz powering the Galaxy S4, depending on the model, versus a more modest dual-core 1.5 GHz processor powering the Zoom. 16, 32 and 64 GB storage versus 8 GB, 2 gigs of RAM versus 1.5, 5-inch Full HD Super AMOLED screen versus 4.3-inch QHD Super AMOLED screen, 13-megapixel main camera versus 16-megapixel main camera, plus a truckload of sensors on the GS4 versus just the usual suspects on the Zoom. This is not a Galaxy S4, and this is probably the last time we'll say this. On the software side, things look a little bit more alike, meaning we got Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean running on both devices, with Samsung's own TouchWiz user interface on top. However, due to the lack of certain sensors and functionalities on the Zoom, the user experience is inferior to the one on the S4 if you care about all the features present on the flagship. There's no air view, air gesture or S health on the Zoom. If you don't care about these, you shouldn't be concerned. Another omission, just like in the S4 Mini's case, is the LED notification. You won't find it on the Zoom and you won't find it in its settings either. And since we're talking about a 4.3 inch screen on the zoom, the keyboard is lacking a fifth numeric row at the top. That aside, everything else seems to be the same, with some additional camera-oriented features on the zoom. There are 25 shooting modes on the zoom versus 12 on the S4. The camera interface, while similar at first glance, is also slightly tweaked on the zoom to get you smart modes, favorite modes and expert settings for program mode, manual mode and color wizard. In the first case you set the exposure and the shutter speed and the aperture is being set automatically. In the second mode you adjust the shutter speed and aperture and in the third mode you change the brightness, color saturation, contrast and sharpness. You will also find a certain photo suggest application on the zoom which, based on your location, shows you interesting places to capture on film and the ring around the lens acts as either a zoom setting ring or a quick launch when idle, 
jumping straight to a certain mode in the camera, as well as an in-call photo shooting shortcut. Editing images on the zoom is similar to the GS4, with built-in tools for making your pictures more personal, like cropping, adjusting, applying effects, and so on. One of the biggest annoyances with the zoom, in our case, is the inability of TouchWiz to function in landscape mode, while you're on the home screen, app tray, and other areas. We do understand that Samsung wants you to use this as a phone, but it comes naturally to hold it in landscape. Nothing a software update cannot fix, it's just there on our cons list alongside the lack of an LED notification. Even the focused assist light could have been a feasible solution. And while we're talking about the camera, this is how different these two, air quotes, phones are. The zoom lens extends for a maximum of 10 times optical zoom, and the results, to be honest, are impressing. We're glad to say that we're satisfied with the camera capabilities of the zoom. That's not to say that the S4, or at least our Exynos S4, is a bad camera. No, it's one of the best out there, but let's take a look at some sample images so that you know exactly what we're referring to. In bright outdoors, they both capture and deliver great images. However, once you start to zoom in on things, the S4 simply cannot put up a fight with the optical zoom on the GS4 zoom. Due to the lens construction, we also found macro performance to be superior on the zoom, and as far as low light is concerned, the zoom is far superior to the S4. So, who is the S4 zoom for? If your shooting needs are limited to snapping a couple of shots in bright, sunny outdoors, where you can get close to your subject, it's definitely not for you. If you like your low light images, zoomed in subjects, blurred backgrounds, and manual settings, it is definitely for you, regardless if you are an amateur or semi-pro photographer on the go. It is for those who don't want to carry a camera and a phone at the same time. It is for those who want their party, birthday, clubbing, nature, sports, and other pictures to look good while answering a call on their camera. Oh, let me rephrase, while taking all these pictures with their phones. Everyone, that's gonna do it for today's Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom versus Samsung Galaxy S4 video. We're gonna have a lot more coming on the Samsung Galaxy S4, including more comparisons and the full review, so stay tuned for that. Until then, I'm Anton Dinod. You can follow me on Facebook as well as on Twitter. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Till next time.